one might well argue uh, that, uh, Ambassador Shepard, that the failure of the United States to sign on to these accords, which you worked so hard um, uh, to bring about and bring others into, would, is the absolute height of hypocrisy, that, that the United States, as the primary mover behind uh, the creation of this regime of international law, then refuses to participate in it. And, but, it but at the same time, uh, it would seem uh, what Jeff's perspective here would be that that perhaps there has is has remained some validity to this fear uh, that the courts, that these international courts, are not completely reliable. That that political considerations might come into play in terms of who's prosecuted and who's not. And it does seem that that has been a major part of the American fear of signing on to these those those kinds of inability to predict the outcomes of the, of the application of these laws. But is that a legitimate concern? And then I do want to hear from Jeff. Exactly. I'll just briefly say, as a negotiator, of course, I express that fear that there would be a politicalization of the prosecution. So how do you build safeguards into the process to, to deal with that issue? We built those safeguards in, and the record of the International Criminal Court so far, in terms of the United States and, and our NATO allies, has been that it has not been used as a political wedge against the United States. Yeah, I, I think that in the ideal, I would agree with the ambassador. I think if we, were, if we could be confident that the court would work the way it was intended to work, the way the ambassador envisions it working. I don't think there's any good reason why the United States should not be part of that court. Part of that is from my own experience as a JAG officer with full knowledge that we are very aggressive about prosecuting our own service members who commit battlefield misconduct. I think we have a very credible record of that. You don't hear of them as war crimes because we just charge it as murder or battery or rape or whatever the crime is under the military code. So if the complementarity concept works effectively, then I think it, it, it's a good step forward and it is, it is dubious that we're not part of it. But I think there is still, and I still have some skepticism about the, the credibility of the process. And I think case, that's why I thought the Godovina case was so critically important because that case had to come out right. And I agree with the ambassador that in the end, the system worked. But in my view, as a, as a former criminal lawyer, when an appellate court reverses a conviction for insufficiency of evidence, that also reflects that there was a pretty stark failure at, at the trial level. And that, that concerns American military leaders. And other events that have occurred at the court, when the Palestinians filed their request for the prosecutor to uh, consider asserting jurisdiction over Operation Cast Lead. My view was that should have been summarily dismissed because under the treaty there was no basis of jurisdiction. The prosecutor kind of mulled over that for about a year. Those type actions add um, fuel to the fire of concern that for a country like the United States that wants to be a part of robust international interventions that sees itself as, a, as the major military player in the world, there's concern that that system cannot be subject to any type of political pressure. And ideally, I think it's moving in the right direction, and I would agree with the ambassador. I hope we get to a point where the United States embraces the court. I personally don't think that it's likely anytime soon.